In a recent video, we discussed new recommendations to treat run-of-the-mill diverticulitis. And in this video, I'm gonna treat you on the management of badass diverticulitis. Hospitalization for diverticulitis is needed when a patient's symptoms become very severe and they simply can't keep anything down. They're gonna need an IV and receive antibiotics and fluids through it until they're able to eat again. But once they're able to eat, they can usually return safely home and continue a course of oral antibiotics to complete their recovery. But that's still really run-of-the-mill diverticulitis. Badass diverticulitis occurs when there are complications of the disease. Complications occur because of extensive inflammation. Inflammation might penetrate through the wall of the colon until it perforates, causing a rupture and a leak of its contents into the belly. Or that inflammation might swell inwards to the point that the colon becomes obstructed. It can also leak out and cause an abscess to form, a little collection of pus sitting in the belly. Or it might tunnel through from the colon into other organs, connecting them in a process called a fistula. Let's discuss how perforation, obstruction, abscesses, and fistulas are managed. The management of a patient with perforation is very individualized depending on how they do day by day. It's immensely helpful to have a surgeon follow because one of the most immediate things that may be needed is surgery to resect the disease portion of the colon and to clean out the belly. If a patient is clearly septic and crashing, then that will be done immediately, but very often it follows a more conservative course, watching that patient day by day to see how they're doing. And at times they do wonderfully and they're able to discharge from the hospital having healed themselves. But at other times they have a more smoldering course they might have persistent pain, an elevated white count, and smoldering fevers that suggest that there is an infection hidden in the body. In that case, additional imaging is needed to find it, and once it's discovered, then an interventional radiologist comes to help out. The interventional radiologist is gonna guide a needle into the abscess using imaging such as a CAT scan or an ultrasound, and then draw fluid out that can be sent to the lab so the organism that is causing the infection can be identified, and more importantly, the antibiotics that will kill it can be used for your treatment. After that initial fluid is pulled out, a drain is left in place so that fluid continues to exit the body and resolve the abscess. Day by day, the output from that drain will be monitored and as it decreases, we know that we can safely remove the drain. When obstruction occurs, the GI tract is closed for business and that means that a patient can no longer eat food and the secretions that the stomach produces are likely gonna be vomited out and so we need to put an NG tube nasogastric from the nose down in the stomach so that those can be suctioned out. When we suction that out, the patient is losing a lot of acid and electrolytes and so those need to be monitored each day and replaced through IV fluids. With time and antibiotics, the inflammation will often settle, and if it does, then the patient can have that nasogastric tube removed and go about business as usual once the GI tract is back open for business. At times, the obstruction is so persistent and severe that a patient will require surgery to have that segment of the colon removed, and at other times, even after the inflammation has passed, there will be scar that resides in the colon and makes a person prone to partial blockages. That can often be resolved with a colonoscopy and a dilation that stretches that segment back out. Fistulas can cause some of the most complicated situations that follow diverticulitis. For example, if a person were to have a fistula that adjoins their colon to their bladder, they may not at first notice it until they have repeated urinary tract infections and cultures show that there's bacteria that would normally grow in the colon are showing up in their urine. Because these fistulas form after a long course of inflammation, they won't simply go away with antibiotics or other medications. There's a lot of fibrotic scar tissue that requires a surgical team to correct the problem. In this case, you would need a colon surgeon and a surgeon that specializes in the bladder, such as a urologist, to work together to solve the problem. I hope this information helps you to better understand the complications of diverticulitis and how they are managed. Thank you for watching and be safe.